Iowa State University and 1968 is important. It marked the arrival of a new style of football. Exciting style of football, the result of an explosive combination. A national football figure turned brilliant young coach and a youthful, inexperienced team. Before the season, Iowa State was expected to lose all ten games. But the Cyclones just weren't buying, and they won three of their first five games. That there were seven losses during the season seemed almost unimportant, for every fan enjoyed the thrill of fresh, exciting football while the opponents suffered the unusual, the unexpected. Buffalo was the first to feel the sting of the aggressive youngsters who didn't seem to know they were supposed to lose. John Warder, who became a brilliant quarterback, fakes a handoff and flips a pass to Jeff Allen. Warder shows his running ability on this play, sprinting out and around right end, then cutting back for a 16-yard gain. Allen gives the fans the first of many big plays. Cutting back on an inside reverse, Allen gets a delay block from Tom Lorenz. Here's a big defensive play. Steve Powers intercepts a Denny Mason pass late in the second quarter to stop a Buffalo scoring threat. Fred Jones blocking helps Powers get to the 18. Johnny Majors worked hard on punt returns, and this one sets up another Cyclone score. Tom Elliott takes the ball at the 43 and gets some fine screen blocks to take him to the Buffalo 18. George Dimitri leads Jerry Boyington and Andy Waller in a raid on quarterback Mason just to let the offense know it's not alone. Defensive moves like this loss at the hands of Ted Reimer since the 28-10 Cyclone victory. Arizona was one of the toughest defensive teams in the nation, but the Cyclones cracked the Wildcats for two tallies far above the average. Andy Waller was a frustrated tailback who became a fine defensive tackle. Ron Gardine is another Wildcat back who learned to keep out of the Cyclone line. He contributes one of the six fumbles caused by Cyclone tacklers. Elliott gets this one. Warder and Otto Stowe team up here for one of the 34 passes the young sophomore caught. Again, the defense takes its turn on the stage. Driscoll shoots for an Arizona touchdown on the one, but Jeff Simons takes it out of the air with a fine backward leap to save the score. His efforts are appreciated. Sam Campbell is a tough man in a battle for the ball. John Griglione, a fine young lineman, shows the best way to stop a passing attack. Here's a reminder of the rugged defensive play of the Cyclones. The Cyclones went to Provo as a two-touchdown underdog. Again, however, their brand of football upset the forecasters in a 28-20 victory over Brigham Young. Defense, again, plays a big part in the victory. Sanford is ready to pass again and gets the ball away, but it's tipped by Waller, which lets linebacker Mark Withrow get the pass and return it 14 yards.
Johnson breaks into the BYU secondary and battles his way for 10 yards. This time, Jock gets 14 yards after taking the pitch out from Warder. There are some great blocks from Stowe and Allen, but he does some fancy running on his own. The best blocking in years is a mark of the 1968 team. Warder makes full use of excellent blocks from King and Allen to pick up 13 yards on this play. Here's the first really big payoff on daily practice on punt returns. Tony Washington, Andy Waller, Fred Jones, George Dimitri, and Bob Williams supply great blocks, and Steve Powers runs along for added protection. Elliott runs the ball back 84 yards for the score. Stowe ranks with the best of the Big 8 receivers. He takes this shot from Warder and turns it into a 16-yard gain with the help of a block from Lorenz. Opposing coaches ranked Warder among the best. Here, King springs him with a fine block, and John works his way for 17 yards against the Cougars. This time, the key block is supplied by Bill Easter. Then Warder takes care of things himself for a 24-yard gain. John can run on his own, too. He gets line-blocking help early here, and then simply refuses to be stopped as he drives into the end zone. BYU trails 20 to 21, having just scored in the fourth quarter. Trying a two-pointer, Sanford's pass is right on target to Casey Boyette, but Tom Elliott streaks into the picture and knocks the ball loose. Elliott's effort saved the game, and then the Cyclones march for one more score. Two big plays in that drive to pull the game out of reach involve brilliant Jeff Allen. Allen adds plenty of yardage to this pass for a first down on a great running effort. Warder sets up this run with a perfect fake, and Allen demonstrates that he is one of the top wing backs in the nation. The Cyclones just weren't letting this one get away. Colorado was awfully tough in 1968, but again the Cyclones gave a great spectator show. Here's the type of play that got the Cyclones a reputation for bruising tackling. Bob Roulette punts to safety man Mike Bynum. Allen arrives just as Bynum makes the catch and separates him from the ball with a vicious tackle. Roger Gookie does a sound job of pass blocking for Warder, and the Cyclone passer hits Stowe for another completion. Extra effort was a trademark for Sam Campbell as a pass catcher in 1968. What he does with this toss is a perfect example of the drive and determination of the senior from Michigan. King played both fullback and tailback with equal effect. With Mike Bliss cleaning out the hole, King rams this one over right tackle for a good gain against the bus. Allen holds the season record in the Big 8 for kickoff returns, and here is one reason why. Warder has to be one of the most interesting quarterbacks in the game. He keeps on this play, gets good blocks from Googie and Davis, and can't be stopped until he picks up 17 yards. Desire, reckless at times, was always a part of the Cyclone game. Bob Anderson tries to hit Monty Huber, only to have monster man Roy Snell break it up with a fine play. Powers makes a diving interception to take the ball on the ISU six-yard line. 
The Cyclones are in a hole now, but Doogie blasts up the middle of the strong Colorado line to the 15 and out of trouble. For reasons of his own, Sammy Davis promised himself he would run a kickoff back against Colorado. He had good blocks from Easter and Allen early, but most of the way he is simply winning a foot race with the Bucks. Warder and Allen got together 17 times during the year on passes. Jeff has to fight Colorado for this one. King has the block and Googie the run as the Cyclones are in one of their usual sensational late game sprees. Stowe averaged better than 12 yards every time he caught a pass. Here's one reason why he gained so much ground. More of the intense desire that brought Campbell four touchdowns during the 68 season. Despite pass interference, Sam catches the ball, rips loose, and gallops into the end zone. With Wayne Besky supplying a pass block, Obert Tisdale flips a completion to Ben King against the Bucks. Tisdale, Warder's fine understudy, gives the handoff to Roger Googie on this play up the middle. Googie gets fine blocking from Tim Jeffries and Tom Barnes. Sophomores like Stowe and Tisdale showed great poise all year to bolster hopes for a fine 1969 showing for the Cyclone. Kansas State was ready to convert the Cyclones into a victory present for some 32,000 fans in the new Wildcat Stadium. But Iowa State had other ideas. Ideas like intercepting six passes. Ideas like winning the game for themselves. Iowa State got down to the business of scoring in short order. Warder keeps and moves to the K-State four. Two plays later, with Roger Googie slowing Manuel Barrera just enough, Warder skirts right into the end zone for the score. Wrigley on again. Another Warder-Allen combination, good for 13 yards. Jeffries and Bliss make the trap blocks, and watch Otto Stowe take out two men. Most of the time, it's Allen doing a great job. With his final move, he fakes the last K-Staters out of the way and covers 61 yards for the score. Leading by 16 to 14, the Cyclones drive late in the third period. Allen simply forces his way in for the final touchdown of the game. K-State is still not out of the game though. Lynn Dickey drove the Wildcats to the Cyclone 10, but here Powers makes a great interception. A play later, Warder pulls the Cyclones further out of the hole with this fine run for 18 to the 29. Then it's King's turn to protect the Cyclones' 23 to 14 lead. Ben gets a good block by Googie, and then rams on to midfield for a total of 21 yards. Jerry Fyatt puts himself on the interception list with this one from Dickey. Oklahoma was on the way to a tie for the 1968 Big 8 title and gave the Cyclones a 42 to 7 defeat. After trailing 35 to seven at halftime, the hungry Cyclones held the strong Sooners to seven points in the last half. Steve Owens ran for more yards last year than any other Big Eight back ever. Eddie Hinton was the top receiver in the Big Eight last year, but that didn't bother the Cyclones. Iowa State gets another first out of the game Owen's first fumble of the year. 
Oklahoma was not supposed to throw interceptions. Allen not only broke Big 8 kickoff records, he was one of the best in the nation, ranking fourth when the year was ended. This one went 62 yards before safety man Jim Files could get it. All year long, Warder came up with great runs. John gets a fine block from Besky and then roars up the middle against the Sooners. We've seen Campbell's fighting finishes to Warder's passes before. In this case, it looks like the whole Sooner team would be needed to bring him to a halt. One more by Campbell. The big guy likes to catch the ball and loves the contact. This one is hard to believe. That Sooner still doesn't know how he lost John. His urgent business upfield took him 31 yards closer to the Sooner goal. Lorenz, like Campbell, was a battler. The Rhinebeck sophomore had no intention of stopping just because a couple Sooners thought he should. Tisdale indicates here that Warder's graduation is not going to be the end of the Cyclone running quarterbacks. Further proof that Tisdale is going to be a factor in the 1969 grid picture comes on this toss to Allen. And Jeff, as usual, turns it on for still more yardage. Kansas came storming into Ames as the highest scoring team in the nation. But on this day, the Jayhawks had to share scoring honors with the Cyclones. Iowa State scored three times after intermission to keep Kansas and the fans on edge all afternoon. Powers puts on the pressure when Bobby Douglas hits John Mosier early in the game. The fumble becomes Iowa State property when Mark Withrow recovers it. The Cyclones continue to keep pressure on Douglas and allow Tom Hilden to blitz from his corner spot and toss the KU leader for a five-yard loss. Warder and Stowe again. Otto is going to rank with Epi Barney and Jim Doran as the three best pass catchers in Cyclone history. With no place to throw, Warder figures he'd better get out of the heavy traffic behind the line. Besky, Jeffries, and Bliss make the blocks on this trap, and King rips right up the middle. Here's one of the few times a blocker won't be mentioned. Johnson does a great job of getting 13 yards on his own. What a great senior year Warder had. Kansas puts overwhelming pressure on him, and yet the ball is pinpointed to Davis right at the edge of the end zone for six points. Watch the teamwork on the line as Mike Reeves fails to get back to the line of scrimmage. Stowe and Warder. This combination hit at least once in every game of the season. Mike Reeves has more trouble with the Cyclone. This time, Greg Leone is able to catch the fumble in midair and return it three yards. Willie Harris gets this pitch out, and the big sophomore moves the ball closer to a touchdown for the Cyclone. Now he gets the honor of putting the ball into the end zone, driving over the middle for the score. Warder then takes the ball in for a two-point conversion, and the Cyclones have fought up to a 25 to 39 deficit. Nebraska games are always hard-fought contests. 
Seldom do the Cyclones fail to have one of their better games against the Cornhuskers. Allen was the leading scorer for the Cyclones in 1968, and here is one of the quicker ones. Warder makes the pitch, and Jeff runs away from any pursuit. It takes all sorts of plays to make up a game, and this one causes its share of excitement. Roulette lofts a punt from the 43 that rolls to the one-yard line, just as Bliss arrives to put the Cornhuskers in a real hole. Joe Orduna has to take the pitch when Chuck Wilkinson forces the play on the Nebraska quarterback. Fifteen yards was the result of this team effort of Warder and Stowe. Reimer and Hilden look for Orduna after a pitch from Sigler. The play loses one yard. Dimitri is back for this one. It cost the Cornhuskers five yards. Few pass rushes ever got to Warder because of fine protection like on this play. When the ball gets close to the goal line, Harris likes to see that it gets across. He drives two yards into the Nebraska forward wall for this six-pointer. Missouri is about as tough a team to play as there is in the nation. Excitement, as usual, marked cyclone action in the contest. That's over Tisdale at tailback. Tremendous Missouri pressure at both ends of this play can't contain it. Tisdale gets the pass off, and Campbell pulls it in and powers into the end zone for the score. King gets the call at the 44 and booms for 11 yards and first down against the rugged Tiger defense. Here's a play that could have made a big difference. The score is 7-7 and Monster Man Williams makes the interception. But back at the line of scrimmage, an official had called an offside penalty against the Cyclones. Once more, Warder hits his favorite target, Otto Stowe. The Springfield, Illinois sophomore battles for a first down and a 16-yard gain on the play. To watch Warder on this one, you'd think there was no rush on at all. He holds the ball till the last second, then fires for a 17-yard play to Ben King. Allen gives a fine demonstration of his running ability on this pitch out from Warder that takes him around left end for an eight yard gain. Here's a heartbreaker. Missouri had illegal procedure, but the Cyclones were also called for interference. Watch a fine scramble by Obert Tisdale. The former East Waterloo star makes you think of the way Warder escapes and gives more hope for next year. There have been some great battles with Oklahoma State, and this past year was no exception. The Cyclones moved the ball extremely well in the first half with some of their best play of the year.
King had a good day against Oklahoma State. This time he hits over right guard and fights out 16 yards before he can be grounded. With Bliss providing the pass blocking he needs, Warder finds Googie for nine yards on this play. The march continues toward another score with this inside reverse by Allen. Now hang on. This toss comes up just short for Sam Campbell, but the big fellow makes a one-handed, behind-the-back grab to score his fourth touchdown of the year. Allen continues to pile up the yardage for the Cyclones. Jeff had the best rushing average of any regular, a 5.4 mark for the year. Vern Skripsky, Cedar Rapids Jr., kicks this 37-yard field goal in late moments of the first period to give the Cyclones a 17-12 lead. Iowa State never looked better in a game all year. Johnny Majors likes his football fast, tough, and spectacular. And to that end, he's bringing exciting young players to the campus. His game gives Cyclone foes more problems than they'd like to face. And the fans, they love it. We thought the 1968 season held as much excitement as any season ever. If you missed it, join us for the 1969 season. It'll be greater still.